Audio analysis is a powerful feature of VDMX that uses an incoming audio feed to control almost any parameter you can think of. We'll be showing you a workflow and techniques to make your visuals audio reactive by setting up presets to drive parameters using low, mid, and high audio frequencies. In the Workspace Inspector, click on the Plugins button and then click on the plus button to add audio analysis. So we'll drag this audio analysis tab over to an existing tab I have on the bottom right here. Make sure it's on, which it currently is, and right click on the window itself to choose what your audio input will be. I'm using a USB audio interface as my source. And now that you have audio coming in, what you can do is add additional filters. And you do this by going to the Workspace Inspector and clicking on the plus button. And you can add as many filters as you want. Alternatively, you can right click on the audio analysis window and add filters that way. Since I'll be working with low, mids, and highs, I'll go ahead and remove these extra filters. So at this point, you should be receiving audio as shown by the blue waveform in the audio analysis window here. In the Workspace Inspector, there are some values you can manually adjust for each filter. First, let's rename our filters. I'll name them lows, mids, and highs. And this will help you easily reference these when you start linking them to parameters. So in the inspector here, there are some values you can manually adjust for each filter. Under frequency, you can manually input the frequency, or you can just click and drag on the filter itself in the audio analysis window. With this, how wide of a frequency range you'd like to pick up per filter, if you left click, hold and drag up and down on the filter itself in the window, you can adjust the width this way. Or you can enter the value directly in the workspace inspector. Gain adjusts the filter's incoming level. You can increase or decrease how loud the frequency is picked up with this value. Lastly, smoothing smooths out the change between values. We'll leave this alone, but we'll go into this more in depth using num effects. In this first example, we'll show you how to make a layer's opacity audio reactive using audio analysis and create presets to recall your settings easily. You can access the layer's opacity from the layer composition, or you can use the preview window. So right click on your chosen layer's opacity slider, and we'll use the lows filter as our data source. Right off the bat, you'll see that the layer is flashing on and off with the low frequency. Slide the low filter to locate the low frequencies you want to trigger the opacity with, and adjust the overall gain or signal input level to ensure your parameters are being affected. The reason we adjust the overall gain is because in a live situation, it's easier to adjust this on the fly rather than manually dial in values into the workspace inspector. It'll be much easier to adjust the gain as the music changes or the levels rise or drop. I usually map either a fader or a knob to my MIDI controller to adjust the gain. For more accuracy, you can adjust the width of your audio filter for it to trigger on a specific sound or frequency. For example, a kick drum or a snare hit. To easily adjust the width, you can click and drag on the filter itself. To get a sense of how your values are being affected, pay attention to this red meter here to see how hot your filter levels are and adjust the gain until you're satisfied. If you need to save on some processing power, you can close the audio analysis window by clicking this X right here. Or you can do what I do and just have another tab loaded right next to it. And you can just hide it when it's not in use and switch back to it easily. Now I'll be creating presets for my lows, mids, and highs filters to affect the opacity of the layer. Shift click on the opacity slider of your layer. Right now you can see that it's receiving values by the low filter in the audio analysis. So let's create a preset for the lows by clicking on the preset button right here. Click on the plus button and let's rename this to L for lows. Now you'll see the L show up next to the opacity slider and this can be triggered by clicking on it. Next let's set the mids and highs presets. Shift click on your opacity slider then click on the receive button. Uncheck the lows filter and click on the plus button then click on the arrow and choose the mids filter as your data source. And under presets, we'll add another preset and rename this to M for mids. And we'll go through the process one last time for the highs. So click on receive. 
Make sure mids are unchecked. Click on the plus button and choose the highs filter as your data source under audio analysis. We'll create the preset by clicking on presets, hit plus, and we'll rename this to H for highs. I like to create one last preset which resets the slider to zero. Click on receive and what we'll do is make sure that none of these filters are checked so that we can regain control over the slider, especially if we plan to transition to another visual. So uncheck, click on presets, then plus, and we'll name this one zero. In case it isn't, make sure your opacity slider is set to zero before doing this. Now that we have all of our audio analysis presets, let's trigger them to see them in action. So if you click on zero, your slider will reset and you'll have manual control over the slider values again. So if we click on lows, you'll notice that the opacity is now being affected by the low filter. This is the mids preset. Now the opacity is being affected by the snare hits of this track. And lastly, we have the highs filter. So these high frequencies are affecting the opacity now. Alternatively, if you want to retain control over your opacity slider at all times, what you can do is add an effect instead. And you can choose something like the exposure adjust. And what you can do is create the audio analysis presets on this parameter here so that it adjusts the effect rather than the opacity slider itself. All right, so now let's go ahead and smooth out our audio analysis using num effects. Think of num effects as effects that are applied to the values or numbers coming from your audio analysis filters. So essentially we'll be smoothing out this data. I'll be focusing on the two num effects, smooth and fall. Shift click on the layer opacity slider and in the UI inspector under decimal data receiver is where you'll find the edit num effects chain. So click on that. And this is the num effects chain inspector. In the add asset dropdown, we'll choose the effects smooth. And now we'll add the effect fall. I'll go ahead and load the audio track back in so you can see how this is affected. And you might not notice much of a change right away, but if we disable these, you can see that the opacity has a lot of strobing. I'll re-enable smooth, and I'll increase the smoothness to about 0.8. And for fall, the fall speed about 0.9. It's pretty subtle, but what smooth does is make the changes between values more gradual. And the fall effect smooths out the values when they're decreasing, so you get a bit of a fade. And it really depends on your taste, but you can customize these values to however you want. So by adding these num effects, you'll be smoothing the values when they increase and decrease. Again, if you disable these num effects, this is what your output looks like. So enable them for a smoother feel. So when you're adjusting the sliders, be aware that over smoothing might decrease the sensitivity of your audio analysis. So lastly, you'll want to make sure to save your opacity slider presets if you want to retain the num effects on these. In the UI inspector, make sure the right preset is highlighted, in this case L, and hit the update preset button. If you like how your num effects are set, what you can do is save your num effects chain to recall on other parameters. To do this, you go to your workspace inspector, then click on assets. In the asset type dropdown, choose number effects plus chains. Then click the plus button on the left to create a new category. And I'll just name this category to num effects. Now click on the plus button to the right and create new effects chain. Let's name this smooth. Now we can copy our num effects from our low filter preset. Shift click on the layer's opacity slider and make sure we're on receive. Now click on the edit num effects button. Click on copy. Now go back to the workspace inspector. Make sure our chain is highlighted. Looks like our name didn't save. So let's just rename this to smoother. 
Now go into this num effects inspector and hit paste. Now we have our smooth num effects chain we can recall as a preset at any time. Let's click on the mids preset on the opacity slider. Then edit the num effects chain in the UI inspector. And under add asset dropdown, we can now easily load the chain we just created. Always remember if you want to save these num effects, make sure to update your preset. And we're good to go. Lastly, we'll show a couple examples on how audio analysis presets can be used with your favorite effects. Let's disable the audio analysis on our opacity slider for now and bring it to 100% opacity. I have Kaleidoscope and Bump Distortion loaded into my layers. Let's go ahead and enable Kaleidoscope. For Kaleidoscope, I'll be working with the Slide X parameter, and this is what Slide X does. What we can do now is copy our audio analysis presets from the opacity slider to our new effects parameters. Shift click on our layer opacity slider and click on the preset button in the UI inspector. From here, we'll copy our presets and paste them into our Kaleidoscope Slide X parameter. Under Presets in the UI Inspector, we'll click on Paste. And now our audio analysis presets are loaded into our Slide X slider. Now we can go ahead and trigger the Lows preset. So it's looking a bit spastic, so what you can do is adjust the range of the parameter to make it more subtle. Do this by shift clicking on the parameter and you can either input the values directly in the UI inspector by changing max and minimum envelopes, or you can just drag the slider handles. So I'll make this about 0.4 so that it doesn't go too high. Let me check the values here. Just drop it back a little bit. All right, that looks much better and it's not as active as before. Now if you want, you can update your preset to save the slider's range values. So since we loaded our audio analysis presets from our opacity slider, our num effects chain from earlier should be saved. All right, now let's do the same with the bump distortion on layer two. I'll just bring this one down a bit and bring layer two up. First, I'll adjust the radius to about 0.5 under Bump Distortion. Now I'll copy our audio analysis presets from our Kaleidoscope. So make sure you're under Presets and click on Copy. Next I'll paste it to the Level parameter under Bump Distortion. So now that we have it pasted, let's go ahead and enable Bump Distortion. It's already triggering the level using the low filter preset. So let's adjust the slider's range values next. This time I'll input them directly into the UI inspector. Looks like the minimum slider value was adjusted, so let's just enter a max value of about 0.35. Now I'll drag the slider's minimum value to about zero. And it looks great. The visual is now responding to bump distortion using a low filter preset. And you can also see that the num effects smoothing values are adjusted and making the motion of this bump distortion a lot cleaner. And there you have it, audio reactive effects that are easy to trigger with presets. With these techniques, you can create and tweak effects parameters to your heart's content and have them react to whatever audio frequencies you choose. Just remember to adjust the range of slider values to dial in on the look you're going for. We hope this tutorial gave you some workflow insights on how to automate and use audio analysis to drive various parameters. DocOptic.com has some free visuals that are encoded for VDMX. You can download those and check out some of the other tutorials we have for VDMX. Feel free to leave us comments or feedback and stay tuned for some additional tutorials and techniques in the near future. Thanks for watching. Until next time.